Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with wool roll bread. That's right, I've spun quite a few yarns on this channel, several of which were true. But one thing I've never done is make a bread that looks like a bunch of rolls of wool yarn. And if this looks like it's gonna be super hard and complicated, that's good. That's exactly what we want people to think. And it will be our little secret just how simple and easy this technique is. In fact, what you're seeing here is my very first attempt and not to brag, but I think I nailed it. Or should I say knitted it? But anyway, let's go ahead and get started with our dough, which is going to begin with something called a water roux starter, R-O-U-X, which is nothing more than water and flour that we're going to whisk together and then eventually cook over medium heat until it gets very hot and comes together to eventually form something that looks like a gluey paste. And since I did want to stop stirring to change camera angles, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to the part where it starts to get thick. And it's right about here where you would probably be getting a little bit nervous since it looks like we're getting a bunch of lumps and it's going to be ruined. But it's not. Just keep whisking over medium and eventually it will smooth out beautifully. And hopefully if everything goes according to plan, it will eventually look like this. And that's it after pulling it off the heat. All we have to do is let it cool down completely before we use it. And that's it. Once our water roux is ready, we can move on to the actual dough, which is going to start with some warm milk over which we will sprinkle some dry active yeast and then we'll let that stuff bloom, as they say, on the surface for about 10 minutes before proceeding with the rest of our ingredients, which will include our now fully cooled starter. And yes, if you're having flashbacks to the milk bread recipe, there's a good reason. Since that dough started the same way, only it was a milk-based roux, and the starter worked so amazingly well in that bread, I decided to try it in this. And then we'll also toss in some sugar, as well as some salt, followed by one large beaten egg. And then of course we're gonna need some flour. And I'm just using all purpose here, but bread flour would also be perfectly fine. And then last but not least, we'll throw in a few chunks of butter before we start kneading this with our dough hook. And yes, I know sometimes we knead the dough first until it comes together before we add the butter in. But here, since we're only adding a little bit, I think it's fine to add it right at the beginning. And of course, you know the drill. At the beginning here, don't be afraid to stop the mixer and go ahead and scrape down the sides with a spatula. And what we're eventually trying to achieve here is a dough that's very smooth, a little bit sticky, and fairly elastic, which I'm going to give you a great look at here as I transfer it onto my work surface. Okay, so this is pretty much what we're going for. It kind of wants to stick to our hands in the table, but it doesn't attach itself and it will pull away. And by the way, even at this point, if it seems a little bit too sticky, you can always knead in a little more flour. But once we're happy with it, what we'll do is form it into a nice smooth ball and then we'll transfer it back into the bowl which we've lightly buttered, at which point we'll cover that and let it rise for about an hour to an hour and a half or until it just about doubles in size. And as you know, if you poke it with your finger and it springs back, it needs to rise longer. But if it doesn't and mine didn't, we can go ahead and transfer it onto a work surface and we'll go ahead and press out all the air and form that into a nice relatively uniform disc at which point we'll grab our bench scraper and cut this into five equally sized pieces. And yes, four would be easier, as would six, but six is too many, and four is not enough. So we're doing five. And then once portion, what we'll do is roll each of these into a little ball like this. Oh, and I should mention it's kind of important these are equally sized. And to get them exact, what you can do is weigh the ball of dough and then divide by five, and then portion each one perfectly, which I may or may not have done between shots. But if you can get them close by just eyeing it, that's fine. And that's it. Once we have our five little dough balls formed, we'll go ahead and cover those with some plastic. And we'll let those rest on the counter for 15 minutes before all the magic starts to happen. And by magic, I mean making these look like a roll of wool yarn. And for that, what we'll do is take one ball of dough and using just enough flour so it doesn't stick, we'll go ahead and roll that out into sort of an oval shape. Or is that oblong? But anyway, we're trying to get something about five to six inches wide by about eight to nine inches long. At which point we're gonna grab our bench scraper and we're gonna start making cuts down through the dough, leaving roughly one third of the dough towards us uncut. And we're basically trying to get these cuts as close as we can together. So I'm not sure exactly how far apart these are, but let's say about an eighth of an inch. And then what we'll do once we have about two thirds of that cut into strands is we'll roll that uncut third a little bit and then place over whatever we're gonna stuff inside which in my case is gonna be some chunks of dark chocolate. Okay, I think dried fruit is the most popular choice, 
But what would you rather have, chocolate or dried fruit? Right, that's what I thought. And that's it, we'll go ahead and roll that up. Making sure we kind of tuck in the sides to hold everything in. And then once we get to the cut part, we will roll very carefully so as not to press and crush those beautiful strips of dough. And as we finish rolling this, we'll want to try to get our seam on the bottom. And that's it, our first roll of wool is done. And once that's been accomplished, we'll go ahead and pick that up and carefully place that against the side of our prepared spring form pan. And by prepared, I mean generously buttered with a circle of buttered parchment paper in the bottom. And that's it, we just need to do that four more times. And if we put those end to end, they should just go around the circumference of our pan. And if your rolls are a little short, it's okay if there's a little gap between them because when they rise, they will touch. Or on the other hand, if they're a little long, you can just kind of scooch them in there. Since as this rises, it's going to look fantastic. And that's it. Once all five of our wool rolls have been panned, we will cover this with a piece of plastic or kitchen towel and we'll let it rise in a warm spot for about 45 minutes to an hour or until those rolls just about double in size. And this is exactly what mine looked like at that point. And then what we'll do before we bake this is brush the tops with a little bit of milk, being very gentle and careful not to deflate the dough. And that's it. Once that surface has been lightly brushed, it is now ready to transfer into the center of a 350 degree oven for about 30 to 35 minutes or until it's beautifully golden brown and looks like this. Check it out, it looks exactly, well vaguely, like rolls of wool. And then what we'll do is let this sit and cool in the pan for 10 minutes before releasing the latch and removing the ring. And then once that's been accomplished, we will very carefully take a spatula and slide that off the bottom. And then we will let it cool on this rack completely as in all the way down to room temp, at which point it's ready to plate up, decorate, and serve. So I went ahead and garnished with some beautiful spring blossoms, which I freshly cut from a pear tree in front of our house. And I'm going to go ahead and tear one off and try one out. And sorry, I had to move the flowers, since I thought I saw something moving, and it probably would have been a good idea to rinse that off. But anyway, if you're a fan of things like chocolate croissants, you are probably going to love this. Okay, the combination of a slightly sweet buttery dough with just a little touch of dark chocolate is just a timeless classic. But this would be the perfect time to remind you that this really is just a techniques video and this will work with just about anything you could think of to put inside. Okay, as I mentioned, dried fruit seems very popular. I've also seen these things filled with jam and things like custard. Or if you're not into the sweet approach, you can go totally savory and use the same filling as like a barbecued pork bun or the same mixture you'd use in a sausage roll or hey, what about wool roll bread, cordon bleu? So as usual, all that will be up to you. I mean, you are after all Mary's little lamb of whether these get filled with cheese and ham. But really, I think the most important thing to remember is that this looks so cool and so visually impressive. People really aren't gonna care too much about what you put in. They are gonna love this no matter what, which is why no matter what you decide to use, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.